In today's video, we're going to be painting up Esmeralda from the Dungeons and Dragons Wizards Kids range. Okay, so starting off, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to come in with some Elven Flesh. And we're using this to, of course, paint up all of the flesh on Esmeralda here. Um, and the reason why I'm doing that this time is usually I start off with the biggest part of the miniature and I'll paint that in first. But uh, since Esmeralda has quite a lot of uh, small, uh, intricate detail on her, um, I'm going to start off with the flesh, sort of work from the smaller parts and work out to the bigger parts, just so I can get in there and be a little bit more rough as you can see here so I can really get a good coverage on Esmeralda's uh, face and hands and stuff like that. Okay so what we're going to be doing next is I'm going to come in now with a matte white. I'm going to be using this to be painting up Esmeralda's uh, shirt. She has an undershirt on here over top of her uh, big large coat. So we're going to be getting in here this, again uh, quite small detail and there's a lot of uh, other detail covering it so that's why I'm trying to get all these uh, small detail parts done first so I can get a nice good coverage over here with the paint. Now of course I'm going to be painting Esmeralda up as she appears uh, in Curse of Stride and uh, in the canon appearance. I'm going to be painting her as close to that as I can get so I want to be pretty accurate with that and so for that I want to make sure I get into all these detailed spots as you can see all over her body. So with that undershirt dried and complete, what we're going to do now is we're going to move on to, with Calvary Brown and we're going to be using this for our main part of the overcoat. So uh, Calvary Brown here by Vallejo it found is a very very close match for what her sort of uh, canon coat appearance seems to be and it's a nice colour um, that I really uh, quite enjoy and I think I'll be using a lot more uh, in the future but what you want to do here is we've got a lot of um, big flat area with this miniature so what I've done is I've just thinned it down with just a touch of water so it might be one or two drops of water per uh, amount of paint I'm using um, and going over top of here and waiting for it to dry and then coming over it with a second coat if needed to which you probably will just to try and remove some of those uh, brush strokes that'll be on there and of course don't forget to try and paint a little bit of her uh, underside there as well where it can be hard to reach. So now we have a coat completed, what we're going to do is we're going to come in with matte white. Now this is the reason why I did the skin first because I want to spend a few time, uh, I'm probably going to spend a few attempts doing this and what I'm going to be doing is trying to be painting uh, Esmeralda's eyes. So I've just got a really fine brush here and I'm just trying to go over the area where the eye sockets are. Now I'm being pretty rough with this um, because what I'll be doing once I've uh, finished tidying it up and stuff. Um, with our skin colour which will hide a lot of this uh, roughness but I'm doing it so I have a big area to work with to try and get these eyes as good as I possibly can. Okay so once we have the whites of the eyes dried and painted up we're going to come in now with matte black. Now make sure your paint is dry when you do this and now I'm coming in with a very very fine tip brush and I'm just trying to dab an eye in here and <laughs> see it's quite difficult to do See, especially with the camera, I'm trying to uh, work around here, and I'm just trying to paint the eye. And now they look really rough at the moment, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for them uh, to dry. Then I'll come back in with the white and the skin tone, and I will uh, fix them up as needed to. Okay, so you can see here that I've got the uh, irises of the eyes painted in now to how I wanted to. Now it took a few times with the white, especially since I've got white on black. It's take quite a few times to. Uh, get that white to cover the black but just keep working at it and you eventually get it to the point where you're happy with it and now I'm just coming in again of course with our uh, flesh tone to just paint back around the eyes and get rid of all our excess white part of the eye that we've painted on as well. So now with our eyes complete what we're going to do now is we're going to come in with some royal purple from Vallejo and we're going to be using this to be painting up Esmeralda's pants and these, uh, this royal purple is the closest match I could find uh, in my paint set to uh, Esmeralda's um, canon colour scheme so it's quite a nice uh, deep blue uh, purple colour and we just want to make sure we get a good coverage over the areas now sort of starting to be a bit more careful where we're placing all our paint now so if you have to come in with a smaller brush to avoid some of the details we've already painted up. Okay. So once her pants are all dry and complete, 
what we're going to do now is we're going to come in with some leather brown and we're going to be using the leather brown to be painting up her boots now we're actually only going to be painting up one of Esmeralda's boots here so this one that you can see here that I'm painting um, because she actually has a wooden foot so to show that off and as well as in her um, sort of canon art style and uh, just other miniatures I've seen painted up like this um, they have two distinct colors between them because the wood a slightly different shade of brown here so we just want to paint up this one foot of Esmeralda okay so now with her boot completed what we're going to do is we're going to come in now with some matte black and I'm going to be painting Esmeralda's hair the matte black She's, she has a uh, really dark black hair so matte black I think is the best for it because I want it to really show off as black whereas if I was to come in with a uh, sort of a very dark gray or necromancer cloak and that I, it just wouldn't give off the same effect um, that I really want to go for which is trying to copy her appearance as close as I can and I think just going with the matte black I'm not going to worry about uh, too many highlights or anything because I think the matte black is good enough that it's going to just stand out against everything else okay now with her hair completed what we're going to do now is we're going to come on with desert yellow and we're going to be using desert yellow to be painting up Esmeralda's wooden leg so I want it to be a lot lighter uh, color than she has ordinarily since um, her leg is actually this uh, ornately carved uh, wood and even on the miniature itself you can see there's actually some little like uh, scrolling and uh, itch itching work on her foot here so um, to show that off we're going to use a lot lighter color as well as her um, actual canon appearance has it as sort of this very very light uh, brown color which is more closer to which I could find with my paints closer to this uh, desert yellow than it is actually to a brown so coming in here being again caught careful to avoid painting the over areas that we've already painted so once we've completed that what we're going to do now is we're going to move on with some dragon red and we're going to be using this dragon red to be painting up her uh, her cloth uh, sort of like belt she has here and as well as her headband so just coming over here with some dragon red now you may take a couple layers uh, to do this because like I said before I just water my paints down just a touch so I can get a bit of coverage on there and just make them flow that little bit better so just wait for it to dry and come in with a second coat okay so once we've completed that what we're going to do now is we're going to come in with some oak brown and we'll be using this oak brown to be painting up the handles on Esmeralda's weapons here so on a nice big axe we want to come in here with the oak brown and just a little bit on her sword handle as well there there's just a little grip exposed I'm going to be painting that up as well so just a nice quick uh, touch up here and of course if you need multiple layers don't worry about it, wait for the first one to dry and then come in with a second layer as well. Okay, so now with the wood parts done, what we're going to do now is we're going to come in with hammered copper from Vallejo and we're going to be using this to just be painting up some of the detailing on uh, Esmeralda's weapons here. So you can see here on her handle of her sword, we want to be painting that up with the hammered copper, uh, really being careful to just avoid the other pieces we're painted while doing this. So using a little bit of the side of my brush just to try and catch some of those edges and just a little bit on her axe as well. So now that we've done with the uh, detailing on her weapons, what we're going to do now is we're going to come in with gunmetal from Vallejo and we're going to be using this to be painting, of course, the uh, main parts of her weapons, the bits that we need metallic. So this is a nice uh, dark metallic colour here that we've got going. So we just want to really make sure we cover all those areas pretty well. Uh, now, of course, remember if you need... Um, now, I don't generally thin down my metallics as much I'll put maybe just a teensy drop or just have my brush wet when um, using metallic paints just because I don't want the metallic flakes to sort of separate out okay so now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to come back in now with my dragon red and I'm just going to be grabbing the thinnest brush I've got and I'm just going to be placing it on her face to try and paint in some red lipstick now she doesn't really have a mouth detail on her face so I'm just trying to put in as best I can with the thinnest brush I've got to try to give off the uh, face shape I hope it worked out okay but uh, again this is an optional step because um, this is quite tricky to do so if, if you find this a bit intimidating don't worry about skipping the step and I'm just going to try the best I can as well <laughs> okay so now that we've drawn uh, lips on her face what we're going to be doing now is I'm going to come in with some Vallejo earth texture and I'm going to be using this of course to uh, place on the ground to really give her some more um, detail to her base because I really want to go uh, all out with this miniature and um, 
give her a nice fancy basis to end on since she is a um, a D and D character. So I want to try and really up my game as much as I can, as well as I'm trying to be improving over these last few episodes on some techniques that I don't usually do. So just coming in here again, trying to avoid the places that we've already painted, and just give a good coverage over the whole base. Okay, so while that base is slowly drying, what we're going to do is we're going to carry on with some more of Esmeralda. And we, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing flesh wash now to, of course, cover all of Esmeralda's uh, skin tone that we've already got painted over. Now, I'm not worrying too much about the eyes or anything because um, I can quickly uh, wipe up most of that to avoid it turning the eye colour to sort of a flesh colour. <laughs> so just doing that as quick as we can there. Just giving, making sure we do a good coverage over the whole thing. Okay, so once our flesh wash is dry, what we're going to do now is we're going to come in with some Citadel Agrax Earthshade, and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be basically painting up the um, the boots and the bottom half of Esmeralda here. So we're going to be doing the pants and stuff as well. And I'm not going to be placing this over her uh, jacket or top half of her clothes or anything like I usually do with my miniatures which is I give them an all over wash of Agrax Earthshade um, which sort of gives them this dirty uh, sort of battle worn sort of look um, but I'm not going to be doing this with Esmeralda because um, she's a character and I feel like she's a more of a pristine and proper character she doesn't get too much down in the dirty mud and stuff so just focusing on the bottom half so once that's dry, what we're going to do now is we're going to come in with some known oil and we're going to be doing the rest of Esmeralda with her. So now we're going to be doing focusing on the coat and the top half and of course on the weapons because I love the effect that known oil gives off on metallics. Um, the reason why I'm doing this is um, the known oil is just going to really uh, add a lot of uh, good detailing and stuff to all these clothing uh, without making it sort of give it off that brownish tint which I, I don't want to give off that dirty sort of look with this coat I want to make it that she keeps this coat nice and clean as well as her uh, white clothing now I want to make it uh, stay popped and white so that's why we're going with the known oil which just enhances those colors rather than uh, brown them slightly okay so now with all those washes dry what we're going to do now is we're going to come back with our original cavalry brown and we're going to be just going over the high points of Esmeralda's coat here. So just really trying to get into those raised parts and just catch those edges. Now what I'm also going to be doing, which I uh, unfortunately forgot to record in this uh, step, I lost a little bit of the footage while doing this, is um, once all these high points are dry, I'm going to come back in with the same colour again. And I'm just going to be adding just a drop of water to my... Uh, not, not water sorry a drop of white paint to my mixer just lighten it up that little bit more and just go over the top again to give it even higher highlights now I'm going to be doing this over pretty much all of the parts of the miniature so of course we want to use the corresponding color that we painted before onto the highlight pieces okay now with all those highlights done you can see it's really starting to pop now so what I'm going to do is going to come in with some Citadel contrast paint with snake bite leather and I'm going to be just painting up all the ground she's uh, standing on because uh, a little while ago I painted up uh, some snake bite leather onto the Vallejo earth texture and I really like the color that uh, comes out with these uh, two things interact with each other so I'm just coming over here now and painting up that okay so once that's dry what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come in with some desert yellow and I'm just grabbing a dry brush here and I'm just going to be dry brushing uh, over top of our snake bite leather that we've done just to give a little bit of uh, highlighted areas to our base. So of course high, uh, dry brushing is just grabbing a, a rough brush, placing some paint on it, rubbing as much as you can of the paint off uh, onto a paper towel and then just giving quick strokes over top of an area. Okay so once our base is all highlighted up and dry what we're going to do now is I'm going to come in with some random basing materials. Now I'm mainly going to be using uh, these Warlord Games basing materials. I'm going to be using uh, tufts and bits of uh, grass flock and maybe even a little bit of flowers just to um, fancy up this base again. Now this, is, this part is totally up to you so I'm not going to focus too much on it and I'm just going to be trying to paint a, a scene basically with the base so you can arrange this however you want or you could just leave it as it is and how we have it so far
with that, we are now completed with painting Esmeralda from the Dungeons and Dragons WizKids range. And as you can see here, I think I've gotten pretty close to the uh, official artwork that she has in Curse of Strahd and just the miniature herself. Uh, so I hope this has been useful for you if you want to paint up uh, Esmeralda for yourself, especially since it's getting close to Halloween, the spooky area, you might want to paint up a cool vampire hunter. Um, or if you just would like to watch me paint these uh, cool miniatures uh, as much as I can to sort of the canon appearance or just, just in a cool way. Um, but with that guys, I'd like to thank you all for watching. Uh, please consider subscribing if you enjoyed this video uh, or you want to follow along for yourself. And just once again, of course, thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one.